One of your songs, things can only get better, when due to the laws of entropy, this clearly is not true. I've, 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 said, I've said before, actually, that it is absolutely incorrect, the title of that song. Um, I would have, it, there's no excuse for it. I would have called it, um, everything is doomed to decay. But then... I don't think Tony that, Blair would have used it then, would he? No, but it may have been appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> As it turned out. <laughs> yeah. But you're right, it violates the second law of thermodynamics and therefore should never have been sung. That's right. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Brian. I'm sure you've all enjoyed the, uh, the occasion this morning with um, Brian telling us all about what he sees, what he does, and answering your questions. Um, on behalf of uh, the Alamein government and uh, everybody here, I just want to make a small presentation uh, to Brian to remember his visit to the Isle of Man. I'm sure from what he said last night, it won't be his last, oh. and I hope we all hope it won't be your last. And thank you very much for giving us really such a fantastic morning. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning again, everybody. Um, we've had a very interesting lecture so far today, and I suppose the best way of illustrating it and to compare with what we're going to hear now is uh, when we had the first uh, presentation, it was very much a theoretical presentation. These guys and gals now, they're the practical people, and we're very, <laughs> we're very, very fortunate. Uh, when you have a look at the number of people who've gone into space, um, quite literally, there's been just over 500. So today, we've got approximately 1% of the total number of people who've gone into space with us. And I think we're very, very fortunate. But there are strong links between the Isle of Man and the space industry, as we all know. And uh, I'd like to thank Nicole for the work that she's done and uh, also her colleagues for supporting her as well. Nicole, as you know, spoke live to some of our students from the International Space Station, and she took some soil from Tindall Hill, uh, which they call dirt. Now, we would never call soil from Tindall Hill dirt, but uh, <laughs> that's what we got back now. So we've also got a branch or a faculty of the International Space University on the island. So it's also a strong aerospace industry, and that's supported by finance, insurance, and also many satellite companies who are located on the island. So today, we have the experience, as I said, to listen to those who have been there, seen that, and they've all got the T-shirts. So without any more ado, I'd like to hand you over to Colonel Eric Bowe, who will do the introductions for us. Thank you. Well, good morning. It's, a, it's an honor to be here and get the opportunity to talk to you. We, we've really had a great time since we've been here at the Isle of Man and uh, got to see a lot of great places, meet a lot of new people, and it's really just been a, a, a true joy to uh, see and learn. There's always new things to learn and enjoyed seeing Brian's presentation as well. Uh, learned, learned a lot of things, so hopefully you'll learn something from our experience. What I would like to first do is I'll, I'll uh, basically we'll introduce ourselves, then we're going to show a short video that kind of talks about our mission. And then at the end, we'll do questions and answers. Uh, our mission, the five of us, there's actually six crew members. There's one that's not here, our commander, uh, Steve Lindsay. He had, he had some things that he had to do back in the States. The, uh, our mission was to basically take up, we're basically complete the space station with the space shuttles. We're, if you, most of you probably already know this. The space shuttles were kind of winding down the space shuttle program. We were actually on the last flight of Discovery. And then Endeavour just landed about two to three weeks ago, and Atlantis is on the launch pad right now, and it should launch July 8th coming up. Uh, the weather will hopefully will cooperate, but in Florida this time of year, it sounds like right now they have a 60% chance of not going on, on Friday, but it gets, what, gets better as the time continues on. But that will be the last flight of the space shuttle, and we'll talk about that more in our, in our presentation. But on our mission, STS-133, we actually brought up the last pressurized module to the station. Uh, something called the Permanent Multipurpose Module. 
and we attached it on the station, and we'll show you that in the video. Also, we brought up a, a big carrier that we attached to the outside of the space station, like a pallet. And we also brought up a lot of logistics back and forth to, to make it work. We went up as a crew of six, and on board the space station, there's also a crew of six on board. And there's a crew of six right now on the space station. And you may not know it, but the space station's been flying over, and we've had humans in space continuously for over 10 years on the space station. Has anyone ever seen the space station fly overhead here on the LMN? Just raise your hand if you have. Yeah, I can see hands up in the answer. If you, if, you, uh, if you haven't, you can look that up. You can just go to the internet and says, where, where is the space station? You put your location in, and it'll actually tell you, assuming that the weather is like it is outside. And I'm sure it's that way every day here at the Isle of Man, where you can go out and see a clear sky. But when the weather's good, it's actually a, a nice thing to do. And obviously here, you don't have to compete as much with light pollution, so it's a, a good place to see the space station. Well, I'd like to tell you what I did. First of all, I'll talk about Steve Lindsay. He graduated from the Air Force Academy. He was the commander of the mission, and his job was basically safety of flight. He also worked with a lot of the piloting tasks, which was something I was the pilot on the mission, so we worked together quite often. <clears throat> and so, but his big thing was basically putting the whole team together and making sure our training and uh, the mission was con conducted successfully. My job on the mission, I was the pilot, and I helped Steve doing the piloting tests, and at the end of the video you're going to see one of the things the pilot gets to do is undock and do the fly around of the space station. And what that is, is the space station is going around the planet at 17,500 miles per hour, and then we actually undock, move this, the uh, shuttle out to about 600 feet, and we actually physically fly around the space station. That gives us the opportunity to take pictures of the space station, and then to actually, uh, for them to take pictures of as well. I also work with Steve Lindsay and Alvin who I'll introduce here in a second. And we were both worked on the shuttle, has a big robotic arm that we use. We can inspect the wings to make sure that they're ready for entry when we come back to land. And we can also use it to move parts around like that big rack that I talked about that we attached to the space station. We actually use that for that as well. Other jobs, that PMM, that permanent multi-purpose module, it's, we, we like to call it the walk-in closet. And probably more appropriately in space is it's a floating closet. We needed a place to to store things in space that gives us a, a room where we can kind of get things ready for experiments to work on. So my job was to help set that up for, for uh, ingress so that we can go in and, and start bringing uh, things out. Now I'd like to introduce Alvin Drew. Alvin actually uh, will be leaving us here shortly because he, he has a plane to catch. He's going to go up to Scotland uh, later on in the week. The rest of the crew is going to go up to Scotland as well. So you'll see him depart shortly hereafter. But Alvin is actually a helicopter pilot, went to the Air Force Academy. He also has a master's degree from Embry-Riddle University. And if you can think of having done it in a helicopter, Alvin's done it. He's a helicopter test pilot, special operations helicopter pilot, combat pilot. He's done just about everything you can think of in pilots. This was his, as a helicopter pilot. This was his second space mission. His first one was on STS-118. Alvin. Thank you, Eric. Well, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's good to be here in the Isle of Man. Uh, one of the things we got to do is look at the Isle of Man from an orbit when we were flying in space. Of course, you all know Nicole Stott and her husband, Christopher Stott, who's from the Isle of Man. So every time we got near uh, the UK, she would go, let's go find the Isle of Man. So we go out there and take a peek and, and go look down through the clouds and see if we could pick out the island down there. And now, Always, when you look over parts of the planet, for me, it's always, what's it like on that part of the world? What would it be to be standing on the ground there right now? And it looked like a fascinating place, uh, this, uh, this small dot in the, in the sea between uh, Ireland and the, and the United Kingdom, those two big you know, masses around it. And so it's good to be here and seeing what a wonderful place it is. It, it's as pretty as it is from on orbit, it's much prettier up close. Uh, I recommend you get, if you ever get a chance to see it from space, take that opportunity. Um, the International Space Station, is anybody here just not familiar with the International Space Station? Are, we, are you all familiar with this whole this construction project for the last 13 years about this is the general size? And so when, just a show of hands, who's a, who, who has barely any idea what the space station is about? You all are that, that good. I'll just do it briefly in case anybody's too embarrassed to, to worry about that. The space Station is a project we've been working on oh, since the early 90s. Uh, we put the first piece in orbit back in 1998. and. Like I said, on our particular mission, we put the very last uh, major module into the space station, a pressurized module, which means a place where you get to live. All said and done, it is the largest, most complex thing we've ever put in space. Uh, it's four times larger than the old space station Mir. Uh, the solar arrays are themselves an acre uh, in terms of total area, produce about 80 to 100 kilowatts of power, enough to you know, power five homes on a city block here in, in Isle of Man. 
the, uh, let's see, the save station itself, you can set on the ground, would probably cover somewhere between one and two football fields in total area on the ground here. And the part that we live in uh, is the same volume of, say, a, a Boeing 747 or even maybe a five-bedroom house. And so it's pretty roomy up there on the space station itself. And, I said, and our job was, again, to complete that 13-year mission to, to build the International Space Station. I think there are 19 nations involved in the space station, in Russia, uh, Japan, the European Space Agency, uh, Canada, and the United States as well. And so on our particular mission, uh, what Eric talked about, we brought up those two big pieces, the uh, pressurized multipurpose module, which you'll see up there. And I think it's a big tin can is about the best way to describe it, and this pallet, which carried a radiator on board. My particular job during the mission was to uh, work during launch and entry when the, when the rocket ship was re-entry vehicle to sit on the flight deck behind the two pilots, Steve Lindsay and Eric Bowe, uh, just like you'd have a flight engineer on, on an old jet, you know, you're watching the engine instruments, uh, you're checking to make sure that things like the gear are down. Nicole Stott and I shared those duties on the launch and entry. Uh, once we were in space, uh, like, like, like Eric alluded to, Steve, Lindsay, Eric and I got to work the robot arm. And the robot arm is just NASA's fancy name for this crane that we operate to, to pull payloads out of the payload bay. Uh, and so one of the first things we'll do though is we've got this large, I call camera on a stick. It's about this 50 foot long pole so we can actually put the camera beneath the orbiter's belly and along the orbiter's wings and take a very close inspection because during that eight and a half minutes of riding orbit, uh, debris comes off the tank and it's a very violent ride and we're making sure that our uh, somewhat fragile thermal protection, those heat tiles, didn't get damaged and that'll be part of the day. So we spent time doing that. Well, once we, were, we did that, once before we docked the space station and once after we undocked to make sure that no micrometeorites had done any damage as well. Finally, when we were on board the space station, Steve Bowen and I uh, got to go out and do two spacewalks. Uh, one thing about the space station is that because it's been 13 years of construction, even as we're adding new parts, the old parts are more than a decade old. It's like anything in your house that wears out even in space. And, and so we got to go out and do repairs on some of the older parts of the space station and add and upgrade other parts to the space station while we were up there. I'll talk about Steve now. Steve comes to us from the U.S. Navy. Uh, he's been a submariner uh, while, before he came to the astronaut corps, which means he spent the first part of his career uh, beneath the oceans, and he spent the second part of his career in the skies above, in, in space above our atmosphere. So we're trying to figure out what Steve has against air because he says he never want to work there. Um, Steve uh, graduated from the United States Naval Academy uh, with a degree in engineering and subsequently from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology with a degree in ocean engineering. Uh, this is uh, Steve's third space flight. Uh, he was also on STS-126 with Eric and on STS-132, the flight immediately preceding ours and then finally on our flight. We did a sixth and seventh spacewalks on our particular mission and I got to do my two spacewalks basically apprenticing under Steve while we were doing those particular ones and it was an honor to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Steve Bowen. Yeah, originally I wasn't supposed to be on this flight. I was on 132, which, interestingly enough, a year ago I was actually in the United Kingdom on these, during this very same week with my post flight for 132. And so I went back to the office and picked up our normal job, and these guys were in training, and I, they asked me to actually be a family escort, which means for an astronaut we go down and we try and assist the families through the, the launch pre process, the launch week. And uh, actually there's some pictures of me floating around the island from the night viewing that some of the uh, citizens here had a chance to see, uh, none of us knew at the time that I'd actually end up on this flight. Uh, that, unfortunately, their attempt, launch attempt in October and November uh, failed due to technical reasons, and the subsequent launch was scheduled for February. Uh, in January, Tim Copra, who was the original MS2 for the mission, uh, was injured in a bicycle accident. So Steve Lindsay made the decision at the time to task Al and Nicole with a lot of additional work to take over the flight engineer tasks uh, for Tim. And I, I was selected uh, to, to fill his role on the EVA side. And in that role, you usually have about a year, year and a half to put together and develop all the procedures and plans uh, that go into it. And as EV-1, you're sort of the person that helps uh, guide that along the way. And fortunately, Tim and Al and Nicole and Mike and the entire EVA team had done such a fantastic job on these procedures, I had very little to do beyond, you know, beyond looking at the procedures and learning and talking to Tim and having him lead me through the procedures uh, to go out and execute. And 
when we go out and execute, as you'll see, uh, basically 